It truly is almost like its own planet. Um, the exterior of the, the site here is like walking on the moon. It really is. It's nothing but a whole bunch of lava rock and you're above the clouds the majority of the time. It is a very remote location. We are at the top of the volcano and the highest peak in the island of Maui. Um, we're capturing objects that no one else in the world is capturing on a nightly basis. We're finding lost satellites that were never tracked 30 years ago every night, and uh, we're keeping track where they are to make it a safer place uh, to operate in for everybody's assets around the world, not just the U.S.'s assets. On an average night, we track uh, 20 plus uh, unknown objects with the sensors, and we catalog them, or we send them to the Joint Space Operations Center, and they catalog them and they uh, start to track them and we'll follow up and track them. Uh, my mind is very uh, open to <laughs> things that I never knew that even existed. See all kinds of stuff. Um, it, it's very unique to see, you'll be watching the sensors uh, display screen and console and you'll see a nebula form on the, uh, the screen and uh, I, we get to see things that most people never see in their lifetime that are in space. People are always very surprised when we give them tours up here and we show them a depiction of how many satellites there are in uh, near Earth orbits and deep space. And that's mainly because uh, people don't think about it uh, as much and they don't realize just how long that we've been in this business and launching satellites up there. And it's more the reason to be very responsible with, uh, with the assets that we do have and to keep track of where they are through our deep space surveillance. Nearly every facet of our lives is enhanced by the Global Positioning System, GPS. So as the commander of the Second Space Operations Squadron, my job is to operate the Global Positioning System to provide precise navigation and timing to the entire world. This complex network consists of a constellation of 31 operational satellites, but one of these satellites must be replaced. If you join this project, you will work with Air Force Space Command to determine the precise placement of this satellite in one of six orbital planes. We'll take your recommendation to the commander of 14th Air Force for approval, at which point we'll load it into the launch vehicle at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, and directly inject the GPS satellite into its precise point in space. If you calculate the wrong location, the entire network is compromised. This isn't a hypothetical situation. This isn't a simulation. This is a $150 million satellite, no pressure. These regimes pose a grave and growing danger. The ambition to create an extremist caliphate in the heart of Iraq and Syria is a threat to our own security. For the last 40, 50 years, there has been a steady stream of funding, proselytizing, organizing, and promulgating coming out of the Middle East. In this effort, the United States will never waver from our determination to protect our people and the peace and security of the world. My team, the operations group, brings the operations focus to global missile warning.
I'm very fortunate in that I have outstanding leaders, outstanding airmen, well-trained to do a critical job. Our primary focus is missile warning for this nation. Gone are the days when it was just the Soviet Union and the United States with missiles that could range each other's countries. and provide threat to not only the citizens, but armed forces, installations, and capabilities. You look at China, Iran, North Korea, and other countries getting into the missile business, increasing accuracy, uh, increasing threat to our forces and our allies around the world. We provide persistent global surveillance not just for U.S. forces, but our allies as well. We have to do it. There are millions and millions of people relying on us to get it right every single time and to get that message out as fast as we possibly can. Data is monitored by multiple satellites that we command and control. It's a space-based infrared system. Many folks will know that as SIBRS. We use overhead persistent infrared, OPIR, data to determine whether or not an event emanating from the ground could be a threat to someone else. And still relies heavily upon the Defense Support Program satellite constellation, DSP as we know it. We have um, several satellites on geostationary orbit and several satellites on what we call HEO, highly elliptical orbit. Those provide essential coverage for almost the entire globe without pause. Space-based missile warning provides an advantage for our nation and our allies that we rely on as a nation every single day, every single minute. We've got to be able to do this 24-7, 365. We want to be able to shoot these threats down before they can uh, impact our forces, our allies, or our nation around the world. We have truly exceptional airmen. It's not because they walk in knowing it, it's because they walk in knowing that it's important and they work very, very hard to make sure that they never get it wrong. I am very proud of the airmen that we have in the 460th Operations Group. We have the 2nd Space Warning Squadron. We have the 11th Space Warning Squadron, Operations Group Detachment 1, the Op Support Squadron, and we have the 8th Space Warning Squadron. We have the 460th Space Communications Squadron. We're dependent upon them to bring back that mission data from all around the world. And they ensure not only that our base comms are exceptional, but more importantly, all of that mission data gets where it needs to be at the speed of light. We are on point 24-7, 365, every day of the year, detecting, tracking, and reporting threats, particularly missile threats, worldwide. Looking around the globe and providing that data back to protect our forces. But we have this. We, we do this every single day, and we do it better than anyone on the planet. The new technologies that our adversaries are employing require us to stay one step ahead of them. We train never to fail in this mission because the nation depends on us. Since 1987, Air Force Space Command has provided GPS satellites for use by the U.S. military. And since the year 2000, Space Command has provided the GPS satellite system for commercial use to the general public. The multiple applications for GPS include air navigation for aircraft, land navigation for travel and precision farming, synchronization with the atomic clock to timestamp financial transactions for record keeping and traceability, as well as tracking capabilities for any object containing a GPS receiver. As we move into the future, and industries create more applications for GPS, Air Force Space Command will continue to improve, launch, and maintain the GPS satellites that tell you where you are, 
so that you can get where you want to be. Air Force Space Command, providing global access, persistence, and awareness for the 21st century.